bit about Kusama, right? And so, full disclosure, mm-hmm. I own, I own some polka dot, I own some Kusama, um, but but I I think this is really interesting stuff, especially like you know um, the the Kusama Society stuff. I think is very interesting. I'd love if you can just give a, a, an overview of what what in the world is Kusama? How does it relate to polka dot um, and and the ecosystem as a whole as well? Sure. Uh, so Kusama is a uh, we call it a canary network, canary chain. Um, so, you know, you're familiar with test networks. Uh, this is the idea of um, basically a, a, a network that has no value. Um, Bitcoin has a test network. There's a few others. Um, and uh, that just sort of, sort of sticks around in the background, usually um, software that's going to eventually be rolled out to the main net, the sort of main network. Uh, of, a, of a cryptocurrency or blockchain will be first rolled out to one of these test nets uh, just to make sure it's doing roughly the right thing. Um, but the problem with test nets are that they don't really, um, they can't be used to test the things that require some degree of a value signal. For example, governance, right? Governance, we, you know, uh, stakeholder uh, voting, this kind of um, uh, stakeholder participation this kind of stuff is very uh it's pointless to do on a test net because who's going to be interested in voting on a network that has literally zero value it doesn't doesn't make any sense no one's going to dedicate that time to doing that so what we do for polka dot because we really wanted to test this stuff it's very uh you know we're breaking new ground in terms of on-chain governance with polka dot and we really needed to test it before we launched you know a multi-billion dollar market cap network <laughs> that's governed <laughs> by an algorithm so we introduced first kusama a very low value network but still a network that in principle has scarcity and that you know the, there's the people have given value over time. So Kasama is there to make sure um, that our various algorithms be there for governance, um, for sort of just new features, innovations, experiments that we think might be good, but might not be good. They might not work out. Um, these are all things that can be pushed onto Kasama to try it in the real world with real stake, albeit not as much stake perhaps as, as a, you know, one of the top sort of networks, but still enough stake to make it worthwhile for people to actually interact with, test out, um, and, and for us to see actually how, how, how it works with real people. Um, now, in addition to that, of course, we, we are, Kasama is kind of a fast moving, you know, no promises, expect chaos, break it you know, kind of a, a, an attitude for a network, which is quite different to a lot of blockchains. A lot of blockchains really push uh, for their stability, robustness, reliability, as you know, Polkadot indeed does. Um, so really, we wanted an alternative out there that's using the same kind of technology, but with a completely different mindset. And that's really what Kusama fulfills. It's like, uh, you know, if you've got an experiment, you want to try a social experiment, put it on Kusama. Don't put it on Polkadot. You know, Polkadot's there for like the the, the sort of um, production, you know, industry cap- uh, capable um, sort of applications. Uh, Kusama is really there for um, interesting uh, experimentations, particularly social experiments. The society is one of these social experiments. The idea is to say, well, we've got we've got the idea of blockchain, um, where you know you've got these blocks, they're full of transactions. The next block references the, the previous block, and you're sort of building um, a ledger up. Uh, from nothing uh, out of these uh, references, out of one thing referencing the previous thing. Um, can we do that? Can we make it more tangible? Like, because blocks are not very tangible. You try and explain this to my mother, she won't really know what you're talking about. Blocks, what, wooden blocks? No, you know. Okay. Um, so uh, the society is what's called also the human blockchain. And this is the idea that you can make a blockchain out of people. Uh, but rather than these abstract blocks full of transactions, you've got literally human beings. And the human beings, um, as a new one is added onto the human blockchain, they reference an old one. And so we've kind of got this society, I think there's 50 members now, um, all around the world. Most of them don't know the others. Um, and they, each of them, uh, um, have have uh, tattooed, <laughs> crazily enough, onto their body a reference to another member of, of this of this society. And it's all public. You can sort of see the tattoos. And every now and again, one is chosen at random, and they have to actually prove that they still have the tattoo. And they have to prove to the other members of the society um, that they did indeed get the tattoo, uh, and so on. So it's really it's really just a, a, a you know a social experiment. But it's something that that you know kind of using to show that um, blockchains actually can be used to make a um, a, a, a fairly arbitrary difference um, into people's lives. And there's a few other bits that Kasama's doing. It's, it's sort of quite um, heavily in, um, 
supportive of the art world. Um, so there are a few uh, projects uh, that, are, that are sort of Kusama is funding uh, within the art world to try and sort of bring uh, a bit more um, uh, knowledge about blockchain, uh, a bit more awareness into uh, circles that blockchain wouldn't otherwise get exposed to. Um, and overall, it's like Osama's uh, treasury, it's on-chain governance, so it has a fairly substantially um, 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 uh, funded treasury now. Um, and they, uh, the on-chain governance can control this treasury, and Kusama is fairly active in using these funds to support various projects um, to, uh, you know, to bring about awareness and education. Yeah, so a, a couple of things that are, are coming to mind as you're talking is one, um, you know, can you talk to me maybe a little bit about, I'm not sure, maybe the cadence of, of so I was reading about like Moonbeam um, is working on um, a Kusama version or, or they're going to launch a, a, a project on there. Um, and and then they're going to do it on, on Polkadot as well. Maybe can you talk to me about like the process that you would imagine that a team looking to build the parachain, they would, would they go to Kusama first and then they would go on to Polkadot or can you describe how you see this process? Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly uh, one way of doing it. I wouldn't necessarily expect all teams to go um, first to a test. Like we always have a test net. That's what's running at the moment. So uh, we call the test net Rock Oco. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it started just before, uh, just before Christmas, I think, uh, and it's been it's been uh, accepting uh, parachain teams to be um, to be brought on over the last uh, week or two. Um, so the first step is is really sort of get your parachain working just on your little local computer. The next step is to get it onto Rock Oco. We'd expect most people, most teams to like Moonbeam to, to be uh, deploying onto the Rock Oco testnet. Um, Kusama, I think, is, you know, they may also choose to do. Um, it depends whether it makes sense for the team to have sort of two kind of valuable networks going. Uh, one uh, as a parachain on Polkadot and the other as a parachain on Kusama. Could be that some teams don't need, uh, the, you know, for their, for their project, does it make sense to deploy onto Polkadot? Could be like a small project, maybe a social experiment. Maybe they don't have that much funding or they can't get that much backing. And they're, they're perfectly happy with sort of being on Kusama. It could be that another team, um, you know, just jump straight to Polkadot. They know that their stuff works. They've tested it locally, they've tested it on the Rock Oco testnet. They don't need to bother. That For them, maybe the, the security of Kusama isn't sufficient, or maybe just that the other um, the other parachains on Kusama are not going to give them um, a sufficient sort of um, value add for them to be connected into them. So instead, they just can jump straight to, uh, to Polkadot. So related to this, um, so one, uh, the governance of these these protocols, right? Um, and and I, I pretty much already know the answer to this question, but I, I want to ask it anyways. Um, who is in charge of Kusama? Who is governing Kusama? Is it Polkadot? No, no. Uh, I mean, actually, the funny thing here is that if anything, it's the other way around. Um, but no, uh, there's about 19 people, I think I think it was 19, uh, that are, it might be 17, one or the other, uh, that are governing, uh, that are in principle, the council, the Kusama Council, and they they don't have any actual real power, but they 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 have some degree of sort of executive power. It's a little bit similar to the UK um, the UK political system. If uh, maybe if, I don't know some some people might be familiar with it, but basically uh, you've any any sort of legislation has to be still put through um, the the sort of full chamber or the referendum um, as as it is in Kusama, uh, as we call it. Uh, but um, the the council, which are a little bit akin to the executive body, like the, the sort of government, um, are the ones that most of the time put forward the, the sort of things to be voted on. So it's like they say, yeah, we think this is a good idea. Um, please vote for it. And then it goes into the referendum to be kind of uh, voted through. But the, the interesting thing here is, though, that, that Polkadot, uh, as uh, the dot tokens, uh, there are, I think, uh, we originally uh, mentioned that we're going to be um, giving uh, 10 million dot tokens uh, sort of to Kusama one way or another. We hadn't decided back when we announced it like a year and a half ago. Um, but it, it, as it, uh, the, the likelihood now is that we will literally um, be bestowing 10 million uh, dot tokens under the control of the Kusama governance mechanism. So it'll be fully sort of decentralized. Um, and so in, re in reality, Kusama, or the Kusama governance mechanism will have a voice in how Polkadot is run. Yeah, and so, and, and, and I like, cause I've talked to other people about like this relationship between Kusama and Polkadot and like, 
because of this governance thing, that's like why asset is that Kusama can become its its own thing, right? And so one of the main differentiators, and maybe you can talk about this as well. I wanted to touch on treasury stuff too, but if you can touch on, um, again, the main differentiators, um, you know, like you can call it whatever you want, right? You can say, oh, this is a test net or it's a what, whatever you want to call it. But in reality, it's governed by itself, right? The, it's holders, it's beholden only to itself. So it's um, evolving over time. Um, this relationship can really be different later. And, and so can you tell me some of the key differences? Like one of the ones I know off the top of my head is like um, for decision making or let's say unlocking of, of staked dot takes like 28 days or a month, right? And then unlocking of of Kusama is like seven days. So there's a significant difference in some of these things. Can you can you talk about like why those decisions are made or what are the implications of uh, of some of these differences between Kusama and Polkadot? Yeah, I mean, primarily Kusama is, uh, you know, it, it's this sort of live fast, die young uh, kind of a network in that it's, you know, it, it's it's pushing the limits a little bit harder than Polkadot. It's, and it's giving up some of the, um, potentially some of the robustness and reliability, um, but in exchange for the very latest technology, for the ability to change, um, for the ability to adapt a lot faster. Um, and ultimately, these, these to a large degree, are a trade-off. Now, you can sort of argue maybe they can add some cleverness and have both, um, uh, both you know, very fast changeability and uh, extremely high reliability. But I would say, in general, it's, it's a trade-off between the two. And Kusama is trading off uh, the reliability. Um, uh, other things that that are like this probably like the um, the auction uh, so the the parachain lease slots on Kusama are going to be probably four times shorter so instead of six months um, there'll be only six weeks um, so this means there's going to be um, probably a lot more parachain churn um, they'll come and go um, there's uh, the governance in general for Kusama has shorter uh, term limits. Um, I think the council is re-evaluated. Uh, is it once a day still? I think it's. I think it's still once a day. Uh, but in Polkadot, it will eventually be, become once a month, um, and in Kusama, it might eventually become once a week. But there's generally this kind of four to one ratio. So if in Polkadot yeah. it takes uh, four months, in Kusama it only takes one month. It takes so four again, it's days. And much faster. Kusama is able to mobilize, add additional technology features. Uh, make decisions about governance and maybe treasury on at four times the speed that that Polkadot can, right? And